Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Game to Decom video, we're going to be discussing RX Vega. So yes, the capsation event is, of course, going to take place in several hours' time, but ahead of the launch of the card, well, we actually have information regarding the clock speeds as well as the pricing, which has leaked on, as usual, to the internet. I'm going to keep this video fairly brief, because as I said in just several hours time we're going to have a lot more information and AMD, although we're not live streaming the event, which I still feel is a massive mistake, they will then put the event on YouTube, so tomorrow I'll probably be commenting a lot more on the whole Vega situation. So first things first, we're going to discuss the clock speed. Now this information comes to us from videocards.com. And they said, and I quote, this is from my own source, but take it with a grain of salt until I'm able to confirm it. So there are three different clock speeds because, of course, there are three distinct SKUs. The first is the 64 liquid version, which is 1406 based with a boost of 1677 megahertz. Then you have the limited edition, which is 1247 based with a boost of 1546. And finally... There's the Radeon RX Vega Standard Edition, which has a base of 1247 and a boost of 1546. There is no clock speed at the moment for the 56, the Radeon 56, unfortunately. So these clocks essentially are roughly what you're getting for the Frontier Edition of the card. There's not that much of a difference. The Liquid version definitely has a slightly higher clock speeds, but not, you know, amazingly higher. So what about pricing? Well... This information pops up from Newegg. However, as you can probably imagine, it was swiftly deleted. And I imagine the individual who put it online is probably getting somewhat of a slapping in the background. But anyway, if these prices are correct, and I stress if in massive capital letters, then it's actually pretty damn good. I'll go into my thoughts on them in just a second. So the basic Radeon RX Vega is 500 US dollars. I'm going to round these up because I don't think any of us care about one dollar. The Radeon RX Vega limited edition is 549 US dollars. The liquid cooler model is 599 edition, uh, sorry, 599 US dollars. So let's call it 600. And finally, the limited edition with the liquid cooler is 650 US dollars. Quite expensive, I'll grant you, but let's just be honest, that's pretty impressive. There is a couple of prices for the RX Vega 56. Once again, whether you want to take these into account or whether you believe them, that's completely up to you. Supposedly, the RX Vega 56 is going to cost just 400 US dollars, which is pretty damn good. It's essentially a hundred dollars price difference then between the 56 and the 64. So once again, the RX Vega uh, 64 is 500 US dollars compared to the 399 of the 56. Out of pure curiosity, and this is not the most comprehensive search I could have ever done in my life, but it's a basic search. You can find an MSI GTX 1080 Founders Edition card on Amazon.com for around the low 500s mark. You can do the same much for EVGA, which have the GTX 1080 uh, SC Gaming ACX ver variant. Obviously, this means that the pricing, assuming you're getting the lower end card, so let's say the base 64, you're getting a card which is basically cheaper than the GTX 1080. Not, you know, a great deal cheaper, but it is cheaper assuming you're going for the standard air-cooled model. And if you are going for the 56, well, that's not too bad either because you can pick that up once again for about the 400 US dollar mark, which equates to about the same as you can find the GTX 1070s. I say about because obviously prices fluctuate all of the time for A, and for B, obviously it also depends upon the vendor you're going with. So really, it comes down to one question, well, actually two questions. The first is availability. Uh, even if they launch tomorrow, let's just for the sake of argument say that the availability they say is tomorrow, that's nice, but if it's a paper launch and you can't buy one if you're a billionaire, that means absolutely nothing. So even if you put your order into, let's say, Amazon, Newegg, whatever, and your card isn't due to arrive for like three weeks later, that doesn't help anyone. The second, and probably the most obvious, is performance. I'm really suspecting this card is going to be a bit faster than a GTX 1080. I feel it's going to hit the 
the ground between between a GTX 1080 and the TI. I feel that in some applications, it's going to definitely benefit uh, AMD's architecture. In other applications, it's probably going to be closer to the 1080 in speed. But there is one final piece to this puzzle um, in terms of the performance anyway, and that is drivers. Let's play devil's advocate and just for a moment and say that it's exactly the same as the GTX 1080 within a couple of percent. So for exact sake of argument, if you're playing at 1440p and you get 75 frames a second on a 1080, you get 74 frames a second on the Vega. In a different game, you could get, say, 63 frames a second on the 1080 and 66 frames a second on the Vega. You get where I'm coming from, just a 1 or 2% difference. However, there is one distinct advantage AMD have. That is, the Vega cards are newer. And what I mean by that isn't that, you know, it's newer, therefore people are going to gravitate towards buying it. Although, obviously, you will get people doing that just because it's the latest thing. I mean, because it's newer, the drivers can improve over time. My concern is how much more is there left in the tank? I'm making the assumption you might get 5 10%. We all know how NVIDIA have improved the GTX 1080 drivers over time, but we'll have to just wait. I am of the mindset that there is definitely room left in the Vega tank, that the drivers have not reached full maturity, that it probably will be faster than the GTX 1080. The question is for many, for me, A, is this too little too late if you've already bought into the NVIDIA arch uh, architecture? Uh, you know, the whole ecosystem, like streaming, the Shield or the G-Sync monitor. The second is, will NVIDIA drop their pricing? A pretty obvious one. NVIDIA, in theory, are making pretty good profits with this card. If they decided to, say, drop the GTX 1080 base price from, let's say, 500 US dollars to 450 is that going to impact your decision? If the two cards are roughly between one another, then you're probably just going to go with the cheaper card. I would. This, the last question, and this one's probably the most obvious of all of them uh, in terms of you know what I'm bringing up, and that is power consumption. I'm looking at an open rig bench right now, actually, with a GTX 1080 running because I'm actually doing motherboard testing for another system, which is a B350 uh, motherboard for Ryzen. Um, and it's actually like, I'm actually ironically enough using that system to record this audio. So that review will come up pretty soon. I'm finishing the 7820X review right now. I've got all of the benchmarks correlated. So I just need to stick that uh, all together and kind of write the script. So that should be coming in the next few days. Then I'll be moving on to this and a RAM review as well. But the reason I bring that up is because I'm looking at the GTX 1080 and it has a single eight pin power connector, right? On the other hand, all of the AMD cards don't have that. They, With the Radeon RX Vegas, they have two 8-pin power connectors and supposedly a higher power consumption TDP, blah, blah, blah. Now, yes, if you have a 750-watt power supply, 800-watt power supply, that probably doesn't mean much to you. But here's a couple of situations it would mean something to you. If you're paying for your own electricity, then you're, you know, all things being equal, you're going to think, well, this card's costing me more money to run. Secondly... You might have a reasonable power supply, but in the future, you might want to go a second card. Therefore, having two cards, which A, put out more heat, B, consume more power, is possibly going to impact your decision. Because let's say, for the sake of argument, you've already got a pretty beefy rig. Let's say you're going with Fredripper, or you're going with um, an i9-7900 or a 7920. Check out our review, by the way, of the 7900. Plug, plug, plug. You're going to say, well, okay, this is... You know, it's nice. I, yeah, I could afford this power supply, but A, why would I want to? And B, why would I want to put that heat and dump it back into the case? So obviously power consumption and heat are going to probably impact some people's decisions. I'm not saying it's going to make that much of a decision, uh, you know, maker. For example, let's say that Vega is 5 10% faster, but it puts out more heat. Most people are just going to say, eh, okay, I'll deal with the extra bit of heat. Especially in the case of the AIO version, like if it's water-cooled and the heat isn't going to be so much of a big deal, in theory, then that's obviously something to take into consideration. But, on the other hand, if you have a smaller case, then maybe you can't even fit the AIO version in there. So that's also to take into consideration. Especially now we have these really quite miniature GTX 1070s and 1080s coming out. Basically, what I'm telling you is, even when 
the Vega cards are announced, even when we see AMD's inevitable benchmarks, which inevitably will be using games and applications which favour them, which is fine. NVIDIA do the same thing. Not criticising them. Don't rush out and buy the card if you're still on the fence. Just wait for some reviews. Wait for some people to you know, comment on forums. Figure out if there's going to be driver issues. Figure out if there's going to be heat issues. And then make your decision. Ultimately, you know, that's just the best way to go. At least in my opinion. And, you know, your opinion may differ. So if you already have a FreeSync monitor, which is, let's say, a 1440p one, you've already got a nice setup overall, and the only thing missing is a graphics card, let's say you have a GTX, sorry, an RX 470 in your, you know, that's not enough to power 1440p, then my opinion be damned, or anyone's opinion be damned, because even if Vega is only the same-ish speed as the GTX 1080, realistically, you're going to want to use that FreeSync monitor, so that's just something to take into consideration as well. Anyway, I think that's just about it for this particular video. Hopefully you found it informative, interesting, and funzes. Um, I shall see you soon. Take care. Normal stuff, like, share, subscribe, give me internet hugses. I shall see you soon. Bye for now.